Members of the university, graduates, and ladies and gentlemen, it is an enormous honour and, and gives me enormous pleasure on behalf of the entire University of New South Wales family for me to welcome each of you to this graduation ceremony. In welcoming you, we also acknowledge the Benjigal people who are the traditional custodians of this land on which our university stands. We pay our respect to their elders, both past and present. We are here today to witness the conferring of awards on those who are qualified to receive them. Ladies and gentlemen, I make no apology for the fact that I love graduations. Something always exciting happens. You can break the mace, for example, <laughs> and then it takes at least six of us to work out how to make it work. People collapse, people enjoy, but overall, what happens at graduations is that it is a celebration of enormous achievement. On behalf of everyone at the university, congratulations to each of you who are receiving awards here today. First, congratulations because you chose such a fine university. Second, congratulations because you jumped over all the hurdles we put in your way, and here you are today. You deserve our acclamation, and thank you for making this a wonderful part of all of our day and indeed our lives. To those of you who are here to support and applaud those getting awards, welcome to our campus. I know, having had three of my own children go through this university, you've probably had to put a hell of a lot into it yourselves, and I empathise and congratulate you for what you've done. I hope you too enjoy this ceremony as much as I do. Ladies and gentlemen, I have over the years done many, many graduations, and I always find this part of the graduation ceremony very, very difficult. And indeed, as I get older, even more difficult. Why? Because at this point, I'm meant to give the graduates some really good advice, some advice that they might remember, some advice that's pithy, some advice that's up to date. It's the last bit as you get older that becomes a bit more difficult. I have, over the years, come to give you two pieces of advice 
that I want to give and articulate today. I have honed these and re-honed them. I do occasionally test, but don't worry, graduates who come on the stage as to whether they remember what I said. Most of them don't. And then I start to think back to when I sat here as a graduate, and I can't remember not only what was the advice given to me, but also I can't remember who gave it. So my ignominity is likely to be also in question. The two and only two pieces of advice I want to give you are these. It is my perception since I left here as a graduate so many years ago that as people become more educated, as they specialise in what they're doing, as they strive in their particular area of expertise, that there is a tendency to become narrow. And I want to make it clear, I'm absolutely in favour of specialising. I'm in favour of doing your best in your area of expertise. What I'm not in favour of is becoming narrow. My first piece of advice is fight narrowness. The problem of becoming the expert in your field and ignoring what's happening around you is you don't perform as well. You can become slightly uh, full of yourself. You can become slightly out of touch. And in the end, when you get maybe to my age and even beyond, you can find that the train's actually moved on. My first piece of advice is fight narrowness. And if you need help from the community that you're in, do so. Volunteer to do things. Listen to what others are doing. In my life, watching what people do in the arts, what people do in health, what people do um, in education, has been miraculous because it's made a fairly boring lawyer, namely me, actually be a little bit broader. Fight narrowness not just because it's the right thing to do, but because I think it would be very good for you and certainly in the stream of life, which takes quite some time. The second piece of advice I want to give you is one which chancellors down the ages almost always give. But I really believe the way I look at this piece of advice. My piece of advice is savour the relationship of alumni. And that's not just because we love donations and we want to continue to foster and fund this university. That's great, but it's not the part I'm talking about. My perception is that the world has changed. That when you leave here, you actually at the start of a journey, a journey that requires relationships, that requires help, that requires a source of information, and that requires somebody else that you can network with, etc. And that, in my opinion, is where the relationship of alumni can come in. We've got wonderful people working at this university, whether they're educators and or researchers. We're at the forefront of so many areas, and I want to make it very clear to all of you graduating today that you are welcome to stay on the bus with us as time goes on. You are part of our history now, and we want you to be part of our future going forward. It's a symbiotic relationship. If you're there with us, we'll be able to help you on all the new things. We'll be able to help you with contacts, to say nothing of the relationships and friendships that can be built with other graduates of esteem from this place. Ladies and gentlemen, just two pieces of advice. Fight narrowness and don't be a stranger in terms of the relationship of alumni because it's good for us and I think very good for you. Well, you'll be very pleased that over the years I've worked out that people can't digest more than two pieces of advice and a chancellor of my age can't think of the third piece anyway. So I now, if I may, call upon the Deputy Dean Education of the Faculty of Engineering, Professor Morris Pagnuco, to introduce to all of us, all of you who so richly deserve the awards you're receiving today. Will the candidates for admissions to awards please stand?
Chancellor, I present to you the candidates for admission to awards. In the name of the Council and by the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of New South Wales, I hereby admit each of you to the awards for which you are qualified. Graduates, please be seated. Chancellor, I present to you from UNSW Canberra at ADFA for the award of the degree of Master of Cybersecurity, Annalise Rolewska. For the award of the degree of Master of Cybersecurity Operations, Avish Kumar Gangwani. <laughs> For the award of the degree of Master of Cybersecurity Strategy and Diplomacy, Karakon Atho Mack. Chancellor, I present to you from the Faculty of Engineering for the award of the degree of Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Software Engineering, Mohamed Mukadis. <laughs> With Honours Class Two, Division Two, Jajan Kay. Derek Lorenzo G. Duckell. <laughs> Aidan Reese Farrell. Sheng Han Gao. <laughs> Augustin Hyun Woo Lee. Nabil Sheikh. <laughs> Ziching Yan. <laughs> Lin Yu Yang. With honours class two, division one, William Yi Nan Shen. <laughs> Nikhil Singh. Abhinav Taufik. <laughs> With
with Honours Class 1, Rebecca Leilani Yin Wa Chow. Heather Marie Cox. Kevin Long. Maria Schmalko. Lavanya Sud. Yin Hui Tan. Austin Wong. Carlin Thomas Choi Yan Williamson. Yang Jing. <laughs> Cuthbert Zhang. <laughs> Elizabeth Yong Zin Zhang. Minyi Zhang. <laughs> Annabelle Yuan Ching Zhao. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Engineering in Software Engineering with Honours Class II, Division I, and Bachelor of Commerce, Robert Ma. <laughs> For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Software Engineering and Bachelor of Commerce, Bei Chen. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Software Engineering with Honours Class I and Bachelor of Commerce with Distinction, William Yuk Kui Chan. <laughs> Alexander James Georges. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Electrical Engineering with Honours Class II Division I and Bachelor of Science with Distinction, Jonathan Ka Ho Cheng. <laughs> For the award of the degree of Bachelor of Engineering Science, Chan Ho Ro. For the award of the degree of Bachelor of Science, Abra Al Dajon. <laughs> K. 
Cameron John Baker. Smriti Bastala. Aniket Chavan. James David Cunningham. James Deng. John Dwi An Dao. Philip Wong Davis. Lydia Fu. Zi Siong Darren Fung. Samuel Junji Gallagher. Zi Chan Guo. Sija Hao. <laughs> Catherine Yogi He. <laughs> Carlos Hernandez Quintero. Jocelyn Emma Hink. <laughs> Sumaya Farouk Ho. Zhao Hu. James Spencer Hull. Josh Inc. William Jeremy. Yun Xiao Jung. (Applause) 
Arjen Kowal. Ryan Bryce Kiswick. Mubara Nafis Khan. <laughs> Megan Lapis. <laughs> Zoe Lee. Louis Limaga. <laughs> Rowan Mitra. <laughs> Benjamin Tu Koa. Fam Ho. Ashwin Saka. Sonali Sharma. Emma Sue. <laughs> Je Hu Zachary Tan. Mandy Tao Tao. <laughs> Yen Jen Tay. <laughs> Van Roy Tun. Jun Ji Jordan Van Gabriel Justin Versace Jeremy Chung Lum Yip Samuel G. N. Zhang. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with distinction, James Eric Archer. Mohammed Daniel Badami. <laughs> Victoria Ann Lynn Birch. <laughs> T 
Thomas Francis Bowden. Hilary Yvonne Chen. Kevin Chow. Michael Shikwan Chen. Chi Chung Cheong. Yet Chun Chiang <laughs> Angus Henry Cornell <laughs> Sahil Sujit Deshmuk. Natalie Ann Eleftheriadis. <laughs> Angus Fink. Alvin Fujito. <laughs> Alexander John Fulton. <laughs> Jack Alexander Gifford. Gong Gajizan. <laughs> Michael Linford Wu Gribben. <laughs> Jibo Hu. Adam William Hunt. <laughs> Jack Jung. <laughs> Yang Jung. Matthew Ferdinand Wan. <laughs> Yusuf Khalid. <laughs> Nicholas John Cott.
Theodore Anthony Kovios. Anson Lee. Xiao Zhuan Li. Sabine Lim. Karen He Ching Lin. Yu Ji Lin. Leo Liao Liu. Sarah Aileen Yu. Bridget William McCarthy. Anushka Venagopal Menon. Sergio Mancello Mercado Ruiz. Benjamin Thomas Mikan. Yu Ching Min. Tamid Nabi. Brendan James Nyholm. James Penn. Aaron Moshe Pando. Lorenzo Ives Sarabia Paris. <laughs> Stefan Predrag Pesic. Justin Tian Kang Fan. <laughs> Benjamin David Pick. <laughs> Shafi Rafik. Zoe Nicole Yuhiko Ramirez. (laughs) 
Hei Sun Chim. Guest song. Tithi Shirish Aplak. Gayathri Vijay Lingam. Jun Yu Wei. Sebastian Andrew Tavaya Wesley Smith. <laughs> Maxwell Edward Wiles. <laughs> Ava Jasmine Williams. Harry John Wilson. <laughs> Jeffrey Wu. <laughs> Jason Chow. Jonathan Yen. <laughs> Ching Cheng Chang. For the award of the degree of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts with distinction, William John de Dassel. <laughs> Yan Chan. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science with distinction and Bachelor of Arts with distinction, Dylan Jake Bleacher. <laughs> Joshua James Gabriel McClellan. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Media Arts, Fei Yu. <laughs> For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science with Distinction and Bachelor of Media Arts, Judy Jachin Liu.
for the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Bachelor of Science, Luke Logan Clark. Cavell Ray. Apit Sharma. Chun Tak Jaden Se. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with Distinction and Bachelor of Science, John Matho Baptiste Abed. Lyndon Chang. <laughs> Song Feng. Ryan Henry Oldfield. <laughs> Aylin Zhang. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with Distinction and Bachelor of Science with Distinction, Yu Chi Fu. <laughs> Austin K. Yao Lei. Benjamin Liu. <laughs> Christian Kramov Nolev. <laughs> Justin Chun Sang Or. Olga Popovich. <laughs> Kevin Zhu. For the award of the degree of Bachelor of Science Honours in Computer Science with Honours Class II, Division I, Keshwo Lin. <laughs> with Honours Class I, Oscar Saunders Golding. Shizuka Hayashi. <laughs> Curtis Owen Miller. <laughs> Lee. 
Zachary Webb Partridge. For the award of the degrees of Bachelor of Science Honours in Computer Science with Honours Class II, Division I, and Bachelor of Science with Distinction, Nevin Kanishka Suryachi. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you for the award of Graduate Certificate in Cybersecurity, Hui Nguyen. Abhijit Padwadan. <laughs> Hitendra Prabhaka. <laughs> Lynette N. Sundra. Timothy J. Tulumbadjan. <laughs> Justine Tumbridge. Chancellor, I present to you for the award of the degree of Master of Information Technology, Darshana Pritam Shah. <laughs> Kelvin Trin. Jin Long Yu. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you for the award of the degree of Bachelor of Science, Cheng Yuan Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, congratulations to each and every one of you who received awards here today. Thank you, as they say, for visiting us up on the stage. Thanks for putting up with the fact that you have to be distanced from a somewhat damaged mace. And thank you so much for choosing this university. And as I said earlier, I hope we'll be part of your lives for many, many years to come because we're very proud to be associated with you. We have now reached uh, that part of the ceremony when in accordance with the resolution of the University Council, we're going to seek to honour someone who's been a big part of this university for many years. We're going to seek to honour Ms Gillian Siegel AO by conferring upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. And at this point, I'd very much like to welcome her husband, John Roth, who's here today, her son, Jeremy Roth, her daughter, Jessica Roth. I'd also like to, if I may, welcome the rest of the family and particularly the little ones because we're bringing the admission forms out in a minute, hoping that they'll sign them. And we welcome Daniel, Julian's son-in-law, Oliver and Juliet, her grandchildren. And they've been absolutely marvellous during this period. Um, and we appreciate that. 
I'd also, if I may, like to welcome Julian's brother Andrew and his wife Marilyn. You're very welcome here and it's nice to see you. In addition to that, we have, you might have seen, our new Vice-Chancellor come in. And we're very grateful. A Vice-Chancellor's job is not one that has many holes during the day and it is terrific to see him here today and we welcome um, our Vice-Chancellor. I'd also, if I may, just to complete the picture, like to welcome our new Deputy Dean of Law. Um, she, she doesn't like being welcomed, but anyway, Professor Mel Schwartz, who's here representing the Law School, and if you're wondering why, when the Vice-Chancellor reads the citation, you'll get a bit of an insight to that. So, ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me enormous pleasure to call upon our Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Attila Brunges, to read the citation in relation to Ms. Gillian Siegel, AO. Chancellor, I ask Ms. Gillian Siegel AO to stand for the citation. Born in Johannesburg in 1955, Ms. Gillian Shirley Siegel AO was five years old when her family immigrated to Australia. She attended Kambala School and then completed her undergraduate studies at UNSW, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in 1977 and a Bachelor of Laws in 1979, winning the very prestigious University Medal in Law. She holds a Master of Laws from Harvard Law School. The UNSW Law School was only a few years old when Gillian commenced as a student in the 1970s. With just a few hundred students and several now highly respected educators, the school was founded on the belief that law should serve the needs of the people. As a student, Gillian was inspired by the message that law and its application can shape a better society. Gillian's legal career has been distinguished by hard work, determination, and of course, that passion to improve law and public policy. She began her career as an associate to the Right Honourable Sir Anthony Mason at the High Court of Australia. After completing her masters at Harvard Law School and working for the New York law firm Davis, Polk and Wardwell, Gillian returned to Sydney in 1986 to become a senior associate and later partner at Allen, Allen and Hemsley in the corporate and environmental fields. In 1977, Julian became the commissioner and later deputy chair of the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. After completing her five year term, she became a review member of the Dawson Review into the Trade Practices Act. In 2003, Julian embarked on a non-executive career and has, has, and has since held a range of corporate not-for-profit and government advisory board positions in a variety of Australian corporations, particularly in education and health and across the financial sector. She's been the chair of the General Sir John Monash Foundation, Australia's national scholarship and a leadership organisation for postgraduate studies overseas since 2010. Chair of the Australian Israel Chamber of Commerce, New South Wales, since 2015. Chair of the Independent Parliamentary Expenses Authority since 2017. Director of the Garvin Institute for Medical Research since 2009. A board member of the Grattan Institute since 2017. A board member of Rabobank since 2018. A trustee of the Sydney Opera House Trust since 2014. A member of the International Board for the Wiseman Institute of Science since 2019. A member of the Council of the Order of Australia since 2020 and President of the Executive Council of Australian Jury since 2019. She is also a Fellow of the Institute of Company Directors and a member of the Chief Executive Women. Gillian's past positions include Non-Executive Director of the National Australia Bank and Member of the Australian War Memorial Council, Non-Executive Director of the Australian Securities Exchange and Chair of the Banking and Finance Ombudsman Board, Chair of the Administrative Review Council, member of the Federal Government's Remuneration Tribunal, and most importantly, Deputy Chancellor of the University of New South Wales from 2010 to 2019. Altogether, Gillian's contribution to corporate, government, and community life in Australia has been enormous. An esteemed alumna of UNSW, 
Gillian has lent her wealth of experience to the university as Deputy Chancellor from 2010 to 2019, using tools of her profession to improve governance, encourage innovation, and drive the ambitious social outcomes that the university has achieved in that time. Gillian personifies UNSW's values of innovation, collaboration, leadership, and social justice. She is a wonderful ambassador and a champion for the university, demonstrating her extensive knowledge and advocating for UNSW within the education arena. Her commitment to the university is deep. She is very much part of the UNSW family, which is emphasized by the 10 members of her extended family, including her husband, John, her daughter, Jessica, her son-in-law, Daniel, her son, Jeremy, her niece, Danielle, her nephew, Michael, her sister-in-law, Charmaine, and her brother-in-law, Stanley, all being counted as alumni. As an advocate for women, Gillian is a member of the Chief Executive Women and the founding co-chair for the Australian Chapter of Women Corporate Directors. At UNSW, Gillian has been associated with and initiated and supported networking and leadership development amongst women, where there's been a growth in the number of female professors and lecturers due to her efforts. She has also made significant contribution to the uptake of gender diverse recommendations by the Australian Security Exchange Corporate Governance Council, advocating to create pathways for women amongst some of the largest and most powerful corporate entities in the country. In recognition of her extensive services to the banking and financial regulation sectors, not for profit organisation and women, Gillian was appointed an officer of the General Division of the Order of Australia in 2019. Gillian had previously been made a member of the Order of Australia in 2005 for services to business law, particularly in the areas of financial services reform and market regulation, and awarded a centenary medal in 2003 for services to society through the business leadership. Gillian also won the 2005 UNSW Alumni Medal for Arts and Law. A champion for the importance of medical research, Gillian has generously supported the Garvin Institute of Medical Research for many years. As one of UNSW's representatives on the Garvin Institute Board, Gillian was a significant contributor to the development of the Garvin Wiseman Centre for Cellular Genomics, which is a collaboration between the Garvin Centre of Medical Research in Sydney and the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel. The centre, which was established with the support of the New South Wales Government in 2017, is at the absolute forefront of research in single cell genomics and is now working alongside UNSW and other research centres at the UNSW Cellular Genomics Futures Institute to accelerate progress in genomics-led research. Gillian and her family also generously support the Kirby Institute at UNSW, which is dedicated to the prevention and treatment of infectious diseases like HIV and hepatitis. Gillian and her family have also supported the UNSW Law School over many, many years, and the UNSW Student Emergency Support Fund in direct response to the serious financial difficulties faced by many students in relation to COVID-19. The University Council, therefore, noting her eminent service to the University of New South Wales, resolved that it would be fitting if the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, were to be conferred upon Ms. Gillian Shirley Siegel AO. Today we admit her to the university's absolutely highest honour. Gillian Siegel, I now ask you to move forward to the Chancellor for the presentation of the degree. In the name of the Council and by the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of New South Wales, it is an enormous pleasure and indeed a privilege to bestow upon you the award of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. You deserve this, you've worked hard for this place, for your community, and in general, been only successful. Congratulations to you, Dr. Gillian Siegel. It is an enormous honour to do this, and we wish you, your expanded family, all the very best. May they enjoy this as much as I'm enjoying giving it to you. Congratulations. All the very best.
I thank the Vice-Chancellor for reading the citation and, as I say, for attending. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll allow me just one quick personal observation um, in really acknowledging Gillian, who was my deputy for so many years as Chancellor. If you ever become Chancellor of a university, make sure you find a Gillian Siegel to be your deputy, because she makes it look so easy. She does the work, you get the honour, and that's the way it works. But ladies and gentlemen, one other point, if I may. I had the honour many, many years ago to meet Jill and meet and really talk to and know Gillian's late mother, Mignon. And it is my recollection, and there are some in the audience who may re refer otherwise, that she always wanted Gillian to be a doctor, not a lawyer. Well, we fix that today, Gillian. <laughs> it's no problem at all. I now invite, as you can see, she's rearing to go, always ready to go, Gillian to be the occasional speaker. And if you can't remember who she is, you have an even shorter memory than you should. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, um, Chancellor. David Gonski and Vice-Chancellor Professor Tilla Bruong, thank you so much for being here and for reading the citation. Uh, Deputy Dean Professor Morris Pagnuco, distinguished guests, all of you, graduating students and families, can I just also acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the, ba the Benjigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. And can I again express my thanks, particularly to the Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor, the University Council, and to the University as a whole for this great honour bestowed upon me today. As an alum of this great university and a previous Deputy Chancellor, as you've heard, I'm particularly honoured to have received this honorary doctorate. Like all of you today, receiving your degrees, it's a long time since I've received a degree, but it's an important and memorable milestone. So I'm delighted to share it with you all. And can I extend my congratulations to each of you graduating today and congratulations to your families who are here and who've helped you through what I'm sure has been at times quite a challenge. Um, in graduating ceremonies like this, we've seen um, how we have not been able to have ceremonies because of COVID and now we have ceremonies where uh, the Chancellor can be at a distance, uh, but still at a, um, at a participatory distance with each of you. And so um, adaptation is, is the name of the game, and it's wonderful to be able to have ceremonies uh, back again. So congratulations again to making it through what has been, I'm sure, a difficult time in studying through COVID. In preparing for today, I thought about all the occasional addresses that I've heard when presiding at graduations as Deputy Chancellor. And the ones that stand out for me as the most memorable were speakers who conveyed, you know, unlike the Chancellor, their top eight or ten lessons from their careers or their top eight or ten lessons in life. And I thought about it, <clears throat> but you will be pleased to know that I'm not going to attempt anything of the sort. Each of you will just have to create your own path forward. You're not going to, you have to make your own mistakes and you're not going to hear any detailed career lessons from me. The pace of change is so rapid that anything that was of relevance to me and my life and my career will probably be irrelevant for you in any event. We know the world faces many critical issues from climate challenges to food sustainability to changes to the global world order. And the world, of course, has always faced challenges, and it will be your role to respond to those challenges. And I'm sure you will all figure it out. Some of you will have grand ambitions to establish the next Microsoft or Apple or the next crypto startup. And all I can do is just wish you strength, resilience, and luck, and ask that when you make your first million, or if it's in crypto, your first billion, you remember this great university and that it gave you your head start. Others of you perhaps do not have any idea what you're going to be doing in five years' time. And that's fine also. You don't need to know. And I just would encourage you to be micro-ambitious. Take one small step at a time and just do your best at each step. Amazing opportunities will come your way and just be open to grabbing them. 
An open mind will help you turn them into interesting future steps. Remember that you are all talented and you will be successful in different ways. And hard work, resilience and mental toughness to some extent will help you stand out. Now on the basis that the best speeches as opposed to the most memorable speeches that I have heard were also the shortest, I should stop here. But there is, unlike the Chancellor with two thoughts, I just want to leave you with one. Isn't it shocking, and I don't know how many of you have been as affected as I have, but watching on television or on social media what is happening overseas uh, in Europe, in Ukraine. How many of you are following what's going on there? Are you seeing it on television or on social media? Hands up. Yeah. Well, the world, history is a litany of wars and struggles against countless tyrants and power-hungry bullies. Just in the last century or two, we can name pogroms in the Russian Empire, the gulags, two world wars, bloodbaths in Cambodia and Nigeria, killings in Ireland and Rwanda, tragedies in Eritrea and Ethiopia, Sarajevo and Kosovo, and of course, on a different level altogether, the concentration in killing camps of the Nazis. Why is there seemingly no limit to man's inhumanity to man? Why do we do this to each other? The great 18th century Irish philosopher, Edmund Burke, is credited with the answer. Namely, that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. Indifference and apathy allow tyranny to prosper. So as you progress in life and your career, whether with macro or micro ambitions and steps, I would just urge one thing, do not be a bystander. Do not be indifferent to hatred and intolerance. Step up, speak out, and make sure others do as well. With your excellent education from this university, you should appreciate the importance of knowing the facts. Stay informed, speak out against hatred. Don't just leave it to others and go with the flow. Look out for your fellow man. If you do this, you will help humanity, and I guarantee you will help yourselves. Okay, that's my one thought. Enough seriousness for today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day celebrating with family. It's a very special thing, I hope you do, and I intend doing the same. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it never ceases to amaze me how you make someone a doctorate and they suddenly have this enormous wisdom. <laughs> but in the case of Gillian, I'm not surprised. Indeed, when she started her speech by saying there would be not much from her life that she could really pass on, I was starting to get a sinking feeling because I know how much advice she's given us as a university over the last 20 years. But then in her last point, urging us not to be bystanders but, and making sure that we're not indifferent and just be apathetic. Um, in my opinion, she scored it in a bullseye. She's a very smart person. She deserves one of our highest honorary doctorates. We thank her enormously for what she's done and absolutely congratulate her on her wisdom, on her generosity, and indeed the path she's flowing. Thank you very much, Dr. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, that almost completes my part of today. And as Gillian correctly said, it's a great day. Once the graduation and the doffing of the hats and so on is all out of the way, just enjoy it, and we hope you do. But before I go, I wanted to say something about our mace bearer. Emeritus Professor Bryn Hibbert AM comes here not because he's paid to do so, not because it's part of his KPIs, but because he loves this place. And then, of course, he breaks the mace, 
and then he has to put Harford in his pocket, and now he's got to try and protect the Chancellor on the way out with only half a weapon. <laughs> Feel for him. Feel how wonderful this man is, and it's, he's somebody I've known a long time, and he really does, in my opinion, deserve great acclamation. Thank you, Professor. Congratulations to all of you, and I now invite Professor Morris Pagnuco to make some concluding remarks. Thank you, Chancellor. Graduation ceremonies like today's happen because of the achievement of our graduates, but they are also a result of the skill and hard work of members of the university staff. I know those of you who are graduating today and your families would wish to join me to thank those staff who had made this event possible. <laughs> I also believe that we should recognise the indispensable role of families and friends in helping to bring the new graduates to this day of triumph. It is wonderful seeing so many of you here today to share in the rightful sense of achievement of your loved ones. You have been generous in your applause as the new graduates came forward to receive their testimony, and I'm now going to ask the new graduates to return the compliment. Would all of you who have graduated today stand and face your family and friends? Please thank them by clapping. and then salute them by raising your hat. Please turn around and take your seat. This brings to an end the formal proceedings of the graduation ceremony. Would the audience please stand while the official party leaves the auditorium?